greetings from the Fire Island Lighthouse in ever beautiful New York. And this is part of the Fire Island National Seashore National Park Service, U.S. Department of the Interior. And now a walk up to the Fire Island Lighthouses. Yes, I did add an S and we'll talk about that a little bit more when we approach. This is actually one of my favorite walkways. It's all lined with these beautiful reeds that you hear wrestling in the wind off of the Atlantic Ocean as you are approaching the Fire Island Light Station and Lighthouse. And right now we are walking between the Great South Bay and the Atlantic Ocean. And that is the Fire Island Lighthouse with the black and the white. But what we have here is the first lighthouse, or shall I say, what remains of the first lighthouse. This stone foundation marks the site of the Fire Island first lighthouse when completed in 1826. And there is some more information here for you about that and i think it's very neat that they left a portion of the original lighthouse here uh, so you really can visit the fire island lighthouses and there's another island back there we'll get to that one in just a second there's a great view of the atlantic ocean and now this is the fire island light station and this is where you can view uh, the history of the light that stands on top. And you can see there are some people on top of the Fire Island Lighthouse right now. But what makes unique about this location is that there's also the information for those who are interested in illumination. And if we take a look inside, you could see there is... Uh, the Lighthouse Preservation Society and a lot of information. I brought my mom in once and there were some really uh, very friendly people inside that knew a lot about lights. As this is not a lighthouse with someone <laughs> climbing the stairs to light an oil lamp. But speaking of oil, uh, this area of New York would have whales and sharks in the Atlantic Ocean and a lot of those oil lamps some of them were utilized with whale oil so right now we're walking again between the Great South Bay and the Atlantic Ocean you'll see lots of foliage along your path do not worry that is not poison ivy more than three leaves and it's very common here is your poison ivy update that's what you want to stay away from. It's the two leaves directly across from each other. And then the third leaf has that extra space from the branch where it looks like it's about an inch apart. That is the one that uh, has that extra space. And that's rather unison if you are walking along the path. Again, not poison ivy, but you will see it everywhere. I think that first one I showed you is Virginia creeper. Now, the lighthouse, uh, $10 to walk up. And there is, actually, I'll walk you over right now because there is a beautiful view of the Atlantic Ocean. It's actually something very special um, outside. Now, I love taking uh, the photograph with the walkway and the reeds, but there's actually another great view of the Fire Island Lighthouse. And you can actually see it in front of the visitor station. And uh, as well, if you're here like I am today on a hot day, snacks are available. But here is the other view that I mentioned, and it is this anchor view. And if you were approaching from the Atlantic Ocean and you were standing behind that anchor, you'd get a beautiful view of the Fire Island Lighthouse. 
as well as the Welcome Center, which does sell Fire Island shirts, hats, books, Christmas decorations, keychains. Now, one of the things I like to do with keychains is remove the gem from the circular ring and wear it as a necklace. So if you are a lighthouse enthusiast and would like a Fire Island lighthouse necklace, go inside the gift shop, buy yourself the keychain and remove the lighthouse and make a necklace. I first did that when I was traveling in Scotland and I found this beautiful Scotland flag keychain. Oh, that makes a beautiful necklace. And uh, I found that there are similar things to be found elsewhere. And one of them here is that of the lighthouse. Now let's walk to the boathouse. And as we walk to the boathouse, I'll tell you a little bit how the uh, Fire Island got its name. And that is uh, a little bit of folklore. I have not found this to be written down as deemed as fact, but uh, the inhabitants of the island would light fires to lure boaters to land. If people were out to sea, this is probably before there was a lighthouse, maybe even inspired a lighthouse, and they would come to land. And then it is rumored to believe that they would then rob the boaters that came to shore and take all of their goods and uh, utilize those wreckages to uh, make more firewood, to lure more boaters to the area. And that's supposedly how Fire Island got its name. Not a big fire that destroyed everything here, but people robbing boaters by setting fires alongside of the beach. And now let's take a look into the Fire Island Light Station. And this is the boathouse, and there is the boat right there inside of the Light Station boathouse. Now we're going to walk over to the Great South Bay, but as we do, let's discuss Fire Island. How long is it? How many people are here? It's about 30 miles long and there are about 20 distinct different communities. And I love that some of the communities, especially this area, the Fire Island National Seashore area, it is exactly as it grows. Whereas in other areas, there are homes. And in other areas, there are restaurants, hotels, a lot of different personalities, bird sanctuaries. Uh, but unlike its neighboring island of Jones Beach Island, which they were once connected actually. At one point, Fire Island and Jones Beach were connected and people even use the term Fire Islands with an S, kind of like how I mentioned lighthouses. And we also have a West Fire Island. Lots to talk about, lots to talk about. Um, where we are right now is right across from an island. We're on Fire Island, but we are across from, not many people know about this one, so I'll zoom in for you. This is Sexton Island, and it is a residential island. But you can see there are no bridges there, and there are no ferries that go there. To our left would be Jones Beach Island, and the residential island over there would be Oak Island. And then over here we would see Fire Island West. Yeah. And where we are headed next is walking along the Great South Bay. And this community here would be known as Kismet. Now, how does one get to all of this amazing summertime fun in the region of New York State? Well, to get to the Fire Island Lighthouse, you can see some people there are on top. Uh, you can park at Robert Moses Park. Uh, park your car, that is and you can walk along the path. You can take the Long Island Railroad without a car to Bayshore. That would be that side of the Great South Bay. And you can catch a ferry to Kismet and then walk over to the Fire Island Lighthouse. But if you are bicycling and you are taking the Long Island Railroad, the 
Babylon train station is actually slightly closer, but there's no connecting ferry service. You'd have to take the bridge over to Robert Moses. Now, if you're on Fire Island, say Davis Park, Water Island, Kismet, Salt Air, you just walk alongside of the Atlantic Ocean and you can see the Fire Island Lighthouse for most of your walk. I've done it, it's absolutely beautiful. And today I'm gonna to do the walk in the other direction, starting at the lighthouse, heading down Fire Island. Till next time, happy summer from Ever Beautiful. I love New York.